To get great street photographs, you often need to put yourself in potentially challenging situations, from getting confronted by security, Excuse me. Hiya. can I quickly take a photo? Hi. To getting rejected, asking for a portrait. This is quite like a touch thing. To even just getting super close to your subject. And as photographers, we need to be continuously pushing ourselves in order to improve at the craft of photography. To me, when learning the ropes of photography, I wish I had the invaluable insight of hearing how other photographers who were further down the road than me were able to handle and deal with these potentially challenging situations so I could learn from them and I could go out with full confidence that I knew how to handle absolutely anything that was thrown in front of me. And so here's how I, a professional full-time photographer, go out and shoot street photography and deal with these moments as they happen. I've timestamped specific challenges if that's what you're looking for, or you can be an absolute legend and watch start to finish because I build on the previous points that I make and I feel like that is the, the best way to get value from this video. We need to know the two different styles of street photography so then we can understand the different challenges that are associated with them. And so we've got hunting. And hunting is when you're constantly moving around and you're looking for interesting subjects. Take this for example. I found an interesting guy that I want to photograph and I shoot him a couple of times before moving on. And secondly, we've got fishing. And this is where you typically find a composition or an element in your frame that you particularly like and you're waiting for the right subject to come into frame before making your photograph. Here, I found an element that I like in the form of an arrow. And so I hang around and wait for the right subject to come into frame. Alternatively, you might envisage a certain scene or a certain moment developing in front of you where you have the space and the subject, such as this skater in front of Tower Bridge, and you are waiting for that decisive moment that makes your image interesting. And between these two styles, although they have their unique challenges, there's also a lot of overlap. Now we know our different styles of street photography and when we might be using them, we can now discuss the different challenges that we may face when out and out shooting. When you're out hunting, sometimes you need to push the boundaries and bend the rules a little bit to get the image that you are envisaging in your head. Most of the time, you can get away with it, but sometimes you don't. And it is so important to not get arsy because more often than not, we're in the wrong. We've gone somewhere we shouldn't, we've gone to private land, we've climbed up something, we're pointing our cameras at things we shouldn't be pointing our cameras at. However, when confronted, I often like to give the slightest bit of pushback in the form of a joke or trying to say something humorous in the most non-aggressive way possible, because that often tries to elicit a positive response in people. Typically, people go, oh, yeah, whatever, just take your photo, be quick, and then please move on. And that is exactly what we want. We want to be able to take our photos and get on with our day, right? But other times, sadly, you just need to admit defeat, like this time that I just wanted to stand on a wall. Excuse me. Down. Hiya, can I quickly take a photo? Like, down. Sorry. It's not safe. It's not safe? <laughs> I think I'm bouncing you now. Anyone up here, if you get knocked, I've got a massive record. Then you get told off. And okay. I've got, no, it's just about the paper. I've been sitting here to midnight wow. doing paper. Oh, yeah, fuck like that. Are you a photographer? Yeah. Are you yeah. Cards? No, I'm a street photographer. No, no, it'd be the upside, my love side. So I'm not allowed to stand here? You stand here, but you're not going to get a good view, are you? No, that's what I was hoping to go up so I could get yeah, it bending around the river. Right. No worries. And confrontations like this can cause what is known as bruising the scene. This is where your presence as a photographer has an impact on the scene in front of you and how people move and interact within this space. See how everyone looked at me when I was getting told off? Excuse me. That's a bruise. Me and my camera have changed the scene in front of me. And typically when fishing, People can spot you from a mile away. You've got your camera in hand, you're lingering, and this is going to cause people to act and be different around you. And so there's a couple of different things that we can do to help mitigate this and limit our impact on the scene. So number one is being quick. Be deliberate when you see a scene, when you see a moment, and try and take your photo as quickly as possible. A great way that we can speed up the whole process is to get our settings set up ready. So then we can just and take the photo. I also find that trying to not make it too obvious that I am there taking photos. I often like to kind of look off into the distance and then as the subject's kind of going into where I want them to, you can spin around and shoot them. 
When you're in a really busy environment where there's lots of things going on, it's very easy to be distracted and to end up creating trash. But if you are able to simplify the scene by looking for something in particular, this makes your life so, so much easier. I like to think of hands. I like to think of interesting people, weird scenarios, or very human moments. And this simplification of like busyness into simplicity then makes you all of a sudden, it's really, it's really weird. You kind of feel that like you become a hunter. You're constantly looking out for hands. You're constantly looking out for moments. It does something magical to you. And here at the Queen's funeral, when I was looking for interesting people, people that you don't usually see in day-to-day -day lives, I saw this guy and he felt very, felt very men in black talking to a police officer. And I felt like this could have, could have been a scene from the movie. And one of the easiest ways to simplify a scene is to ask for a portrait. But not only is this intimidating for, for you, plucking up the courage to go and ask that person who you really want to photograph, it is so much more intimidating for the person being asked because you know the context, you know what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve, where you're gonna probably not post the photos because fucking Instagram. You know your intentions, but they don't. And so I think that it's so, so important to be direct and be as friendly as possible and to just ask. Excuse me, please can I take a photo of you? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, beautiful, thank you. Oh no, it's okay, Ronin's coming down now. He'll be here in a minute. Amazing. Thank you very much, man. Have welcome. a good day. You too. Sometimes people will need a little bit more context to decide whether they want to be photographed by you or not and they are well within their rights to say no. More often than not, it's not anything to do with you, so don't take it personally. It's more about them and their personal decisions. You just have to accept it and move on. Excuse me, would I take a photo of you reading that book? Uh, is that okay? No pressure to yeah, say it. No, that's all right. All right, it's my favorite book. It no, is really? 10 out of 10, I absolutely love it. Have a great day. Coincidences in street photography are fortuitous combinations of fleeting moments that you have frozen in an image. And they're almost like the opposite of a portrait. You can't ask your subject, oh my God, that was, that was amazing, but I'm just gonna try a different angle, just gonna move again, if you could take one step forward. You can't ask your subjects to do that. And so these images are less about the composition and they're more about documenting how sometimes these bizarre moments happen around us all the time. And so because of their fleeting nature, we have to act quickly. If you notice something like this guy's jumper matching these building work things, you need to be ballsy and to act quickly in order to capture these fleeting moments. Don't worry too much about bruising the scene because by the time you've started to think about the scene and how to compose stuff, the moment will be gone and lost forever. And if you're looking at a scene and you think, oh, if only I can get closer, that would allow me to get the perfect photograph, but I'm feeling a little nervous. Think like a hunter. Move quickly and get in there whilst people are distracted by the scene that's going on around them. I could see this guy was going to try and climb this wall and with all of this busyness around, I knew that I could get my shot of him without him even realizing that I was there. These are just the few different ways that I object challenges. If you have any more questions, then feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Peace.